well to stage 10, you more, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, guys? You right? Yeah. This is nice. Oh my God, you guys like black girls, isn't it? Yeah. Fuck it, hell yeah! Right, there's gun fingers over there. Hide your handbags, ladies. Hide your fucking handbags, because I don't know what's happening. I'm seeing this and I'm like, I can't relate. <laughs> my name is Tanya Moore. Uh, a little bit about me. On Thursday, the 20th of December, 1982, at 7.49 a.m., I was born. On that same day at 7.50 a.m., my dad named me Tanya, spelt like this. T-H. <laughs> A-N, Y and an I, because we're there now, throw it all in. Just put it all in there, right? A. T-H-A-N-Y-I-A. And the best bit, you see the best bit? The best bit, babes, the best bit. You see the H? It's fucking silent. <laughs> Doesn't have to be there at all. Mm -mm. So on the same day at 7.51 a.m., I already knew it was like to be bullied, <laughs> obviously. Uh, what a dick, he had one job, do you know what I mean? You know, most parents look at their children on the first sight, they say, it's love at first sight. They meet the child and they just fall in love. My dad looked at me and was like, oh my God. <laughs> she needs a H. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. <laughs> Do you know, recently I said, dad, like, why, why all the letters? Like, what happened? What, what was going on that day, right? And he said, babes, when your big brother was born, I didn't know how to spell. By the time you came along, I'd learned how to read, and I wanted to show off all new letters that I'd learned. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> I got a little sister, her name's Chantel. Chantel of a silent P, obviously. <laughs> and, um, and I'm going to lie. Nightmare. What? My big brother's name is Eli. That's it, three letters, all go together, all fucking working. <laughs> That's what he got. All right? Nightmare. I'm a daddy's girl, really. I love him. I do love him, really. I was very close to him growing up. Every day before school, he would look me in the eye and he'd say, Tan, don't show the boys your knickers. <laughs> do not show the boys your knickers, right? So I didn't wear any, because... <laughs> <laughs> you can't show them if they're at home. Do you know what I mean? It's not... It's not... It's easier. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Enjoyed it. <laughs> but I do I have, <laughs> have a little sister. Big brother Eli, I love Eli. We've got a Marmite relationship though. Like he likes me sometimes and I don't understand why he was made. But uh, it didn't, <laughs> didn't stop me from following Eli because I could have gone to a school in New Cross where we were raised. But I followed Eli to a school in Kent. As a result, made me the only black girl in my class, right? So my friends would ask me a lot of questions like, where are you from? Where are your parents from? Do you know Wolfie Goldberg? You know, questions, <laughs> right? And, uh, nightmare. And I would say to them, I'm born in London, but mum's from Jamaica and dad's from Jamaica. And they'll be like, what does that make you then? And I'd be like, very, very far. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> silly girls. But no, I loved going to that school because now I like traveling and learning about different people and different cultures. I went to New York, right? And in New York, they love our accents. Oh, every time we speak, they just love it, don't they? Uh, every time I spoke, I felt white and privileged. It was so nice. It was just so... <laughs> I knew what it was like to be blonde. Like, your life is awesome, lady. It's fucking amazing. Amazing! Right? But in New York, they're very silly, right? They, they can't believe there are black people in the UK. And I'm like, babes, don't be dumb. Of course, there's black people in the UK. Our cops don't have guns. <laughs> <laughs> it's naughty, that one, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Thank you. That normally splits the room, right? It does, between like people who enjoy it and racists. <laughs> it's a good joke, guys. You've got to get on board. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I love traveling, man. I do. As a comedian, I travel quite often, and we travel alone, right? So 
recently, I've, I've had like some self-reflective moments. Now, just go with me, guys, right? I feel like I'm selfish, but like in a positive way. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't mind helping, but I have to feel good at the end of it. Do you know what I mean? Like I'll run for charity, but I'll tell everyone on Facebook. Do you know what I mean? Like on my way here, I had to get the tube and there was a lady with a push chair and she needed help upstairs and I helped her because it was rush hour and everyone was like, oh my God, what a nice girl, right? Nah, had I seen her at 11 a.m., fuck that, right? Because no one, you can't feel good at the end of that. That's rubbish. <laughs> But I do, I travel often, I travel alone. Oh my God, right, I had a 10 week job in Wales. Anyone here from Wales? Good, let's get into it. I had a 10 week <laughs> job, right, in Wales. Now, normally when you say Wales, your first thought is Cardiff. I wasn't lucky enough to be in Cardiff. I was in this quaint little seaside town called Porth Cool, right? Oh shit. <laughs> You've been, yeah? It's mad. It's, it's a quaint little seaside town. Most of the residents are elderly, right? Because they're waiting for Jesus. And uh, it's like a nice quaint, it's right on the edge, isn't it? Right on the edge of death, right? And I was there <laughs> for 10 weeks. Now I should not be in a pool of call for 10 weeks. It's like, I'm, uh, I'm from South East London, right? I should not be in a pool of call. It's like taking a sheep to not in a carnival. Makes no sense. <laughs> None. But I was there for a job, right? And I thought, let me go around and have a look and see what Porth Call's like. And I found this lovely restaurant called Harbour Bar. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Harbour Bar is the best restaurant in Porth Call. <laughs> That's fucking right. It's the only restaurant <laughs> in Porth Call, right? Now, I thought Harbour Bar was a little bit mi uh, middle class. So I thought, you know what? When I go back, I'm going to pretend to be middle class, right? So I bought a Guardian and I sat down, right? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> The waitress comes over, she said, would you like a starter? Now guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, when I go out, I don't normally have a starter. You go Nando's, you get the chicken and you fuck off, right? <laughs> no one eats the olives, no one does, <laughs> right? But I thought, Tanya, being middle class, they do free course dinners. I said, I tell you what, you, what do you recommend? She said, I recommend the potato and leek soup. Again, guys, I'm Jamaican, never had potato and leek soup before in my life. We've got potato and leek in our soup, but there's more fucking ingredients, right? <laughs> In a Jamaican soup, there's more food than water, right? We all, you know, you know, right? But I thought, no, Tan, you're being middle class, get the fucking soup. <laughs> so I said, bring me the potato leek soup. She bought the potato leek soup. I ate the potato leek soup, one of the best soups in my life, right? <laughs> now I'm sad because I'm by myself, so I'm looking around the restaurant, just trying to get eye contact with someone because I say, babes, have you tasted the potato leek soup, right? <laughs> there's a party of 20 people right here. One of the guys starts choking. Someone from his table jumps up, runs around and starts giving him the Heimlich. If he's receiving the Heimlich, he gave me eye contact. That was my one opportunity to say, babes, have you tasted the fucking soup? <laughs> Listen, when he died, we all had soup. It was so nice. So fucking nice, man. I do. I tell you the best place I went to was this beautiful country called Slovenia, right? It's quite, it's quite picturesque. You come out the airport and it's got mountains, right? I looked down from the mountains and the comic who was coming to meet me had panic on his face. He said, Tan, bring it in. He said, babe, there's not many black people in Slovenia. There's probably about four. <laughs> <laughs> so when we go traveling around, people who stare at you, people are gonna stare at you, sorry, especially those of the elder generation. I was like, babe, <laughs> that's Hove, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Silly boy. I travel a lot. I do travel a lot, so that makes it hard for me to like maintain a relationship, right? Now, I do what most other people do, go online, <laughs> do a little online dating on the apps, go on Tinder a little bit. Because you know, like most girls go on Tinder looking for love, don't they? Because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> most men go on Tinder looking to have a good time, don't they? Because most men are disgusting, sir, okay? <laughs> they're terrible. Absolutely terrible, <laughs> all right? Nah, I go, on, I go on Tinder looking for material, right? So I just talk to anybody, right? Now this guy, he jumped in and he caught me off guard. He jumped in and he said, if I paid you, would you come to my house? And I said, what for? <laughs> and he said, if I paid you and didn't touch you, would you come to my house? And I said, what for? Because I live in London, it's really expensive. And um, he said, <laughs> If I paid you, didn't touch you, and left the door open, would you come to my house? And I said, what for? And he said, to fart in my face. <laughs> to 
fucking disgusting, isn't it? But I tell you what I left, I learned when I left his ass, right, guys? Um, <laughs> you cannot fart on cue. I've been Tanya Moore, you've been absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>